Hi, and welcome back. If you care about sound and making music, old sayings and nostalgia should be something of the past. There's no doubt digital oscillators can be powerful and have strong advantages over their analog counterparts. I recently added the Clavis Twin Waves Mark II to my setup, and it's a perfect example. It's a compact, very price competitive module that has two independent oscillators. Either of them can function as VCO or LFO, and each mode has a series of useful algorithms to choose from. The VCO mode can do classic analog wave shapes with shape modulation, as well as things like stacked saw waves, self-synced oscillator sounds, and filtered noise. The LFO modes are great for easy self-modulation, rhythmic and tempo sync modulation, and also offer complex random voltage modes. If you like to support my videos or you want to get access to PDF sheets with hundreds of patch ideas I used in my videos, have a look at my Patreon. You can also support my channel through affiliate links in the video description. But now, let's dive right in. When there's a lot of power in a compact package, there have to be a couple of clever tricks to access all of it. Let's start with the VCO mode. On the top half, you will find all controls for a single oscillator. With this switch off, these control the first oscillator. And with the switch on, these control the second oscillator. For each oscillator individually, you can use the coarse and fine-tuned controls to set the frequency. But the most exciting control is this one. With a single push, you can pick an algorithm used by the selected oscillator. I'll explain these in detail in the next chapter. Press again to select an algorithm, and then you can use the knob to modulate a single parameter in that algorithm. For example, the sine algorithm has control over the wave shape. And the unison saw algorithm controls the detuning of the five oscillators. On the bottom half of the module, you find all in and output jacks. Each oscillator has an output, a 1 volt per octave input, and an input that modulates the parameter of the selected algorithm. This comes with an attenuator. Additionally, oscillator 1 has an FM input with attenuator and a square sub-oscillator output. Finally, there's a shared input that can be used to sync or clock either or both oscillators. The parameter and AM, FM input of oscillator 1 are normal to the output of oscillator 2. And the parameter input of 2 is normal to the output of 1. Additionally, the square output of oscillator 1 is normal to the sync input. This makes it very easy to, for example, add some LFO modulation from the second oscillator to the wave shape of the first. As for the rest of the controls, the screen and LEDs next to the buttons always show what's going on with the selected oscillator. With the first LED off, the selected oscillator is in VCO mode. With the light on, it's in LFO mode. I'll talk about LFO mode later. When in oscillator mode, the second button turns on quantization. I'll talk more about that in the advanced feature chapter. The sync button turns external oscillator sync on via the sync input. For most algorithms, soft and hard sync variations are available. You can lock the frequency settings of a selected oscillator by pressing knobs 2 and 3 at the same time. This is great when you don't accidentally want to detune the oscillators when performing, but it also turns the frequency control knob in an octave switch. And that's all about the front panel for now. Let's dive into the oscillator algorithms and some sounds. The algorithms are a key part of the module. They might seem a bit daunting at first, but they're pretty straightforward once you get to know them. There are 20 algorithms divided in a few categories. The first one contains classic wave shapes with shape modulation. There's a sine wave with shape modulation, a square wave with pulse width 
and a wave that can morph from SAR to triangle. All these algorithms come to life in patches. Here, one twin waves oscillator is combined with filter, VCA, sequencer and envelope to make a simple voice. The second twin waves oscillator is used as sine wave LFO to add some wave shape modulation. I show both oscillators separate in all the patches even though it's one module. And I also show the patch lines even when the internal connections are used. The module does audio rate modulation and FM really well. You can use the second oscillator at audio rates and use both internal connections to modulate the shape and frequency of the first oscillator. By the way, in this video I used Granity often as a filter, but only the regular low pass mode and none of the special granular features. Otherwise it would be very unclear to hear what is going on. I made a video about it though if you'd like to learn more. In this patch, two oscillators are using the square algorithm. The outputs are mixed and used in a voice with filter, VCA, sequencer and envelope. Both oscillators are sequenced and an LFO is modulating both parameter inputs to create pulse width modulation. In these patches, the algorithm used in the audio demo is mentioned, but you can experiment with other algorithms of course. Then there's a section of algorithms with stacked oscillators. There's a quad saw with control over the phase spread. Three algorithms based on seven sine waves with either odd, even or all harmonics. And then three unison square. And five unison saw waves with spread control. Here's the same setup as the previous patch, with two oscillators mixed to create a massive sound. The unison saw algorithms are used and the sub octave output of the first oscillator is added to the mix as well. I really like the saw. Here's the same setup but faster, without the sub octave and with a subtle amount of smooth random voltage modulating the filter. Having access to two oscillators with similar algorithms is great for stereo setups as well. Here both unison saws are used in their own voice with filter and envelope. Each voice is hard panned to one side. Again, both oscillators are sequenced with the same sequencer and both parameters are modulated with an LFO. Of 
course, the two oscillators can be used completely independent. Here, the sine with even harmonics algorithm is used. Both oscillators create their own voice with filter, sequencer and envelope. The first oscillator is creating plucky sounds, so a copy of the envelope is used to modulate the wave shape. The second sequencer is running at a slower speed, and the sine wave LFO is used to modulate the wave shape of that voice. The sequencers are synced, and the modulation LFO has its frequency modulated with another LFO. Here is the effect of plucky wave shape modulation on the sign with odd harmonics. Then there are two bitcrush algorithms, one based on a saw and one on a sign. Here, these algorithms are used in the exact same patch as the previous demo. The sign for the faster plucky sound and the saw for the slow bass sequence. There's also a group of algorithms with square, pulse, saw, triangle and sine wave, all with internal self-sync. To be clear, these algorithms have a second virtual oscillator with the parameter controlling the frequency of the slave oscillator. So these don't require the other oscillator to create those classic sync sounds. And thus, you can create two oscillators with sync sounds or even experiment with syncing sync sounds. I want to add some more audio demos, so here's the same batch again. In this case, the plucky envelope is pulling the sync frequency of the sign, and the slow LFO modulation is used to modulate the frequency of a self sync square. Here's a similar patch again. This time though, two self-sync saw waves are used. For all of the self-sync patches, you can select if the algorithm uses a virtual follower oscillator relative to the main oscillator's pitch or with an absolute frequency, which is used here. Both parameter inputs are modulated with sine wave oscillators to really sweep the sync frequency around.
Remember, there's also a regular sync input, so you can experiment with sync sounds on all algorithms, and even sync the sync algorithms. If you like more patch ideas for oscillator sync, you can have a look at this video later. Next up is a ring mod algorithm based on a sine and virtual sine wave. Again, the parameter controls the detuning of the virtual oscillator frequency. Finally, there are three noise algorithms with filter. On these, the frequency knob sets the filter cutoff point. There is one with low pass filter and resonant control, one with a band pass and band width, and one with a resonator. These are great for percussive sounds or to add texture to a synth voice. Here, a noise with bandpass algorithm is used. The 1V per octave or filter cutoff is modulated with a sine wave LFO, and the bandwidth parameter with another sine wave LFO. The noise is sent to a mixer and mixed with an oscillator running the unison sol algorithm, also modulated with a sine wave LFO. The mix is sent through a filter and controlled with sequencer and envelope. The LFO mode of the Clavis Twin Waves is very powerful and easily overlooked. Each of the oscillators can function in LFO mode and it comes with a set of unique features and algorithms. It offers classic waves, which easily turns the twin waves in a complex oscillator and modulator combo. But it can also create interesting random signals, so the module is very powerful when used as a dual modulator in creative patches. When you put an oscillator in LFO mode, the front panel and features change a bit. This knob is still used to select an algorithm, and again, each algorithm has one modulatable parameter. The large knob controls the frequency of the LFO, but the small knob controls the output level of the LFO, so you don't need an external attenuator. When in LFO mode, the second button here selects the clock mode. This can be set to internal, in which case you have free control over the frequency with the knob, or you can set it to external, in which case the frequency knob can be used to divide or multiply the clock sent to the clock input jack. Alternatively, you can use the third button here to sync the LFO to an incoming clock. In this case, the wave is reset, but it still maintains its own frequency, still controlled with the knob. This is great to create tempo synced waves that change shape when the frequency is modulated. Note, there is only one sync or clock input for both oscillators, so you decide how you use it by selecting how each of the oscillators respond to it. Finally, instead of a sub-octave, LFO1 outputs a trigger pulse on each cycle on its second output and the AM input gives you voltage control over the output level. When an oscillator is in LFO mode, it uses a unique set of algorithms. Similar to the audio mode though, there are three algorithms with classic waves. A saw to triangle LFO, a square with pulse width control, and a sine with wave shape. These are all great for classic modulation in a voice. For example, you can use a sine wave LFO to modulate the parameter of the first oscillator in audio mode. Here, running the saw triangle algorithm. 
Both connections to the parameter and FM of the first oscillator are normal and easy to dial in. And remember, the output of the first is normal to the parameter of the second as well. A lot of depth in wave shape can be achieved when you modulate the wave shape with another slow signal like a sine wave LFO. Here's the example used in the intro with a sine wave LFO modulating the parameter of the twin waves in SAW tri LFO mode. The clock of the main sequencer is sent to the clock input with clock mode turned on, so the LFO speed follows the clock. In this case, the frequency controls the clock division, which means you can use the 1 volt per octave input to modulate the clock division. For example, with a sequencer clocked by another copy of the main clock. In this case, the division can be different on each step. Here is the same setup, but instead of using the clock option, the sync option is used. This resets the wave, so modulating the frequency shapes the wave while staying in sync. A copy of the twin waves LFO is added modulating the filter, and there is some external delay added as well. This works great with a more complex modulation signal created. Running both sections of Twin Waves as LFO is a lot of fun as well. Here, two square with pulse width algorithms are used. Each of the LFOs is modulating a filter in simple sequenced voices. For the voices, a 3 and 5 step sequence are used, and the voices are panned hard left and right. A copy of the main clock is used to clock both LFOs as well as the second sequencer. Because the LFOs are clocked, you can use divisions to create interesting patterns. Here, one is set to divide by 16 and the other to divide by 12, so you get interesting shifting patterns. By using the built-in normalization, you can have one or both of the LFOs modulate the pulse width of the other, creating even more dynamic shifting patterns. Thank you. 
Then there are four very nice random modes. The first one is a sample and hold, with the parameter controlling the maximum difference allowed when picking a new value. The second is a sample and hold, with the parameter controlling randomness in time. Then there is a slew sample and hold version, with the parameter controlling the maximum difference when picking a new value. Finally, a mode with slew, sample and hold, with the parameter controlling randomness in time. The power of random voltages is easily overlooked. I'm especially a fan of the slewed random voltages, because they can create very organic movement. Here is a similar patch as used before with two sequenced voices and the two twin waves LFOs modulating the filters. In this case, Brownian and random time factors are used, the ones I called slewed sample and hold earlier. These aren't actually LFOs at all, but add a lot of beautiful motion to a patch. I also added some delay again. These random voltages can be modulated and or controlled as much as you like. Here the second random voltage is clocked, creating very calm and tempo sync movement. And a copy of that slow signal is used to modulate the frequency of the other LFO via the 1V proactive input. There are so many options, it's hard to pick examples. Here is one more with two simple oscillator filter voices, and two random factors modulating the filters. This time a keyboard is used to tune both oscillators and gate and attack hold decay envelope. That envelope is sent to modulate the parameter of the second LFO, increasing randomization of the speed. And a copy of the envelope is modulating the amplitude of the first LFO increasing the amount of random voltage modulating the filter when you hold the key. If you want more patch ideas for LFOs and random voltages, have a look at these videos later. There are a couple of features I don't want to dive in at depth, but are worth mentioning. A feature that's available for oscillator 1 when in audio mode is configuring the FM AM input. In patches so far, I just used this as a simple linear FM input. But you can press and hold the LFO AM button to select one of several ways this input behaves. Beside linear FM, there is an interesting through zero FM mode, which is worth exploring with a lot of the algorithms. You can also use the input as a VCA, in which case it needs a voltage to create an output. 
here, a simple envelope is modulating the VCA and the wave shape, making a very compact voice. If you like glitchy weirdness, you can also use the input to control the algorithm selection, for example with the sequencer. You can also use it to set the bass note when a VCO is quantized. When both oscillators are in audio mode, you can press the oscillator 2 button for a second to select one of three options to set the way the two 1V per octave inputs work. You can use them separately, so you can use both 1V per octave inputs to sequence two independent oscillators. But there's also an added mode, in which the input at both 1V per octave inputs is summed and then controlling both oscillators. This is great when you want to control both oscillators with a single sequence and then use the second input to transpose the sequence. And finally, there's an offset mode, in which both oscillators follow the first 1V per octave input and the second input can be used to add offset to just the second VCO. And finally, each oscillator can be set in quantized mode. There is a long list of different scales available and this turns any signal to the 1 volt per octave input into a melodic sequence. Note though, there is no way to sync or clock the quantization, so it's great when you have a sequencer that doesn't quantize, when you have a few more tools in your setup like a clocked sample and hold module, or of course to make unsynced sequences. I think I gave a good idea of how some of the core algorithms sound and how the module works, but I feel there is a lot more to explore when it comes to sync, cross-modulation, different FM, AM modes, as well as sequencing and quantizing. I'll be using this oscillator in a lot of upcoming videos though, so stay tuned for that. If you'd like to learn more, have a look here, and as always, smash that like, subscribe and bell button if you want to see more modular content from me. But that's it for now, thanks for watching, and see you next time.